years. And when I learned this, my kids were, first learned it, my kids were nine and 14, just turned 14, my daughter. I tried to help them a lot in the beginning. <laughs> I have to say I was a total failure. <laughs> I'd see them in a low mood and I'd run up to them in desperate to help them and going, oh, you're, it's okay. You're just in a low mood. It's just thought. And, and I was trying to help them while they were in a low state and I was urgent to help them, which is a low state. And finally, after two weeks, they said to me, dad, if you say one more word to us about thought or moods, we're going to run away. Now, that was the best thing for me at that time, because I had to stop trying to help, and I had to really just take care of my own state. So the first way you help someone else is take care of your own state. And then from this place of presence and feeling, you just go be with kids presence. I can't tell you how many kids I know that don't experience adults being present with them, or they only have been with adults who have some kind of agenda. They want something. They want the kid to get better or do something or be different. And they experience that as pressure. So they back away. Even with good intentions they back away. So the feeling of presence, kids who grow up around parents who are really present and enjoying life and are very kind and warm, they get drawn toward that more and more and more. So we can, we can help kids enormously just by our presence. Now, if I want to share something, Let me give an example, because it does mean you can't share something you've learned about this with kids, and it's very helpful. I call it planting seeds. I'm not trying to teach them. I'm just pointing them toward truth and then leaving it, letting them see what they can see. If it's true, it'll resonate with them. Okay, so now my daughter is no longer 14, she's 16. She's a camp counselor at a camp. And every counselor has a cabin of kids. And so she had a cabin of young 12, 13 year old girls. And the director of the camp noticed that my daughter did so well with dealing with kids who are having difficulty of any kind. So he came to my daughter and he said, would you mind if I send every kid in the camp who has difficulty to you? <laughs> Here she is, 16 years old. You'll be in charge of the mental health of the camp, basically. <laughs> and we heard that she did really well doing this. And all the other counselors were so grateful that they could send kids to her and they would come back different. And so I said, Nina, what do you do? Now listen to this, this is, what do you do? How do you help these kids? And they said, well, when they come to me, they almost feel like they've been, they've done something wrong and they've been sent to the principal in the school, like they're in trouble. And so I want them to be able to relax and get back to our natural state. So she says, I'll play tennis with them. Hey, how about when your kids are having difficulty, do you say you want to go outside and play? 
she said, I'll play tennis with them or play basketball with them until they get into a good state. And then I'll ask them for their common sense. I'll say, tell me what's going on. What, what's happened? And they'll talk and I'll just listen. And after I've listened to them, I'll say, well, what makes sense to you? Because they're in a good state, they have common sense. What makes sense to you? What would be helpful? What could you do differently? And they always come up with something. I say, great, do that. She said, Dad, I don't do anything. I don't do anything. I play with them, and then I listen, and then I ask them for their common sense. And then I say, okay, do that. <laughs> and, and the kids would go back, and they would have had a change of heart or a change of mind. They would be seeing something different. Common sense brings us a new perspective, a new way of looking at things, and a new, a new idea for how we could respond rather than our usual conditioned reaction. So I started seeing my job as a parent is not to look at behavior and then address it. My job as a parent is to draw out their well-being, help them get into a nicer state, and then see what makes, listen to them, and then see what makes sense. So sometimes I would come home from work. This is how it worked for me. I'd open the door. First of all, before opening the door, I'd say, well, what am I bringing into the house? <laughs> Be honest, Dan. Doesn't matter. It doesn't matter if you're low, just be honest. Because if you're really low and you know it, you're going to be okay. <laughs> right? It, there's a saying if you're crazy and you know it, you're sane. Right? Because now you can take responsibility for it. You... <clears throat> so I'd check my state of mind. I'd open the door, <clears throat> be my wife, my son, and my daughter. And I'd look at them, and it's really easy to tell state of mind when you look for it. And you could immediately tell, immediately tell what the state of mind anybody is in. And now this is me. I'm not suggesting you do this. This is what my common sense said at one point. Find the person who's in the lowest mood. And go be with them and see if you can find a way of having your presence be helpful rather than make things worse. That's very interesting. With my daughter, if I touched her, like to console her, she hated being touched when she was in a low mood. Dad, don't touch me. And the very first time that happened, I said, what's wrong with you? I'm just trying to be nice. I'm just, come here, let me give you a hug. And she goes, no. <laughs> so I had to let go of my expectations and my shoulds about what is helpful and just see what's helpful. And then, and your, your wisdom will guide you toward finding what's helpful for anybody. If you're quiet and in that feeling space yourself, you'll get guidance. With my son, if I touched him while he was in a low mood, it, 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 you could see him relax. You'd see him calm down. But I knew that what was most helpful was the, just the feeling of presence. With my son, often he, when he was upset, I would talk with him about what his, instead of talking about him, about the problem he was having, I would talk to him about his favorite thing, which at that time was playing football, soccer. And I'd say, hey, Ben, how was soccer practice? And we'd talk about that and you could see his mood just lift and lift and lift. And then 80% of the time, there was no need to talk about the problem. 
and sometimes they say, what's going on? And listen. No agenda. Just listening. Sometimes putting my kids to bed was often when we had our best talks and I might slip in something that I wanted to share with my kids. I would say, oh man, today I was in such a low mood and I just, boy, I, I, I was so serious and, and this happened or this happened. And, and then I realized, boy, was it helpful. I just started to realize it's a beautiful thing I'm learning right now. Or if we're both in a really good state, it's a teachable moment. So I might say, well, once your head clears, you'll know what to do. You always do. You have so much common sense, sweetie. You'll do great. I know you will. I know, I know you're caught up now, but big deal. That happens to all of us. Me too. It happens to your mom. Mm -hmm.